So graphing linear equations. And the important terms that you're going to use are the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the zeros. Drop a coordinate at uh, 0, 2, and then maybe drop another one at 4, 0. Get a ruler out, and try to keep this as straight as possible. Since these are notes, and this is going to be a nice resource, and as you're creating graphs, you should be doing that anyway. So I'm going to label this as the coordinates that they are. 0, 2, 4, 0. But now we need to talk a little bit about intercepts, which is what I referenced in the last video, too. So literally, this is where you would intercept the axes. So here's my x-axis and the y-axis. And so if I am coming along and I run in here, this point where I run into my x-axis is going to be the x-intercept. So for us, that means as this line is going along and it hits here, it is actually intercepting the x-axis. So that point of 4, 0 is going to be the x-intercept. When we abbreviate these, you can write x dash int. And since you're looking here, it would be clear that that's the intercept. Same deal. As I'm moving along, and I run into the y-axis, that point is going to give you the y-intercept, because it's where you intercept the y-axis. So as we label this guy, I'm going to tag that as the y-intercept. So talked about that, talked about that, but I haven't talked about the zeros. Now, you know, if you ever think about um, launching a rocket or whatever, or kicking a football, it's often important where it leaves the ground and when it eventually runs back into the ground again. So those are kind of referred to as the zeros. So you don't refer to this point as being a zero. It's really this point right here. So we'll draw a line here and we will call that the zero. Is it always the same thing as the x-intercept? Yes it is. Um, it has different applications. This particular function would only have one zero. And so the thing about the zero is that the zero is where y equals zero. And the other thing too is the x-intercept, that's also where y equals zero. And if you think about what's, what's the height of this value here, well, it hasn't moved up. It hasn't moved down. And so if I traced it back to its elevation, that is the height of zero. So that's where y is zero. But if I look at the value, lo and behold, there's the value of y being zero, too. So you can always figure out your x value at the x-intercept if you plug in 0 for y. And we'll have to do that in problems later so it'll have more meaning. On the flip side, it looks to me like the y-intercept is where x is 0. So after the y-intercept, go ahead and write x equals 0. But if we're only purely talking about the terms and taking everything else out of the picture, this is what we're looking at. The x-intercept, y-intercept, and the zeros. And here it is again with all the different values thrown into the mix. Um, good idea to put that on a vocab card, too, and not just on your notes. So in this first instruction, we're told to graph. And because of the heading here, we are definitely going to be graphing it by making a table. Number one, you would want to rewrite it. y equals 1 half x minus 3. And if I'm going to be setting up a table here, I'm going to do my best to choose smart coordinates. For a linear relationship like this, and we can look at it and we know it's not in standard form, that's fine. But we would know that we could really just graph this with just two points. But so that we can get a little bit of the behavior around the origin, meaning 
around this area, looking to the left and looking to the right, they can collect more than just one or two points. So here, I am going to wisely place my value of zero here, and then we're going to talk about what we choose for these two guys. Now, if you're not able to do this in your head, you're going to want to like write this down or type it in or set it to the side of the paper. But if I plug in zero, half of zero is nothing, minus three gives me negative three. Now, if I were to choose one, then I'd be dealing with one times a half minus three, which, you know, we can always figure out, but it doesn't give me nice whole numbers to work with. So instead, I'm going to choose something that's just a little higher up, two, purposefully so that it cancels out, because now, if I plug in two here, then two over two becomes one, minus three becomes negative two. Now, I went forward so that you can see that if I were mirroring this on the other side, I'd use negative two. Because when you're graphing things, you want to mirror it. You don't want to like be like, oh, now I'm going to do negative four. You don't want to have those weird skips. So if I plug in negative two, negative two over two becomes negative one, minus three becomes negative four. And since I chose things that didn't have skips, then I can go from negative four to negative three to negative two just by counting up by ones, and that's a way for me to verify that my table is accurate and that my work isn't tripped up. Because I chose these values around the origin, and I go to graph it, you know, here's negative five, positive five, five, negative five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. We've done a lot of graphing. Make sure yours looks better than mine. It's kind of a little bit uh, subpar for what I'd like to see on your papers. So here is negative two, negative four. 0, negative 3, and then 2, negative 2, and there's my graph. Looks pretty good to me, and as a nice thorough step as we're graphing with y, go ahead and write 1 half x minus 3 and go ahead and label that graph. Graph by making a table. Since they're forcing us to do it this way, Let's go ahead and set up our xy chart after we rewrite y is negative 2 for problem 2. Here's xy. Now if y is negative 2, it's always going to be negative 2. And if it's always going to be negative 2, then I can just be whatever here, you know, like negative 5, 0, 5. Doesn't matter at all. Here, I think your graph can be a little bit more rushed. Still neat here. But um, all I really need to know is moving in the negative direction for not y, negative 5, going 1, 2, 3, 4. Then when I come by and I graph this, there is my y equals negative 2 equation. And yeah, it's a horizontal line. So that it's clear, we'll label the axes x and y, because that way my green line, which you're not using multicolors here, stands out as being just that. Different. And the issue with number three is that it is not in standard form. I mean, it is in standard form. So as we graph making a table, it's often better to get out of standard form and put it into what is called slope-intercept form. Now we've rearranged an equation, but my goal there was to get y by itself, which I did. And I subtracted from both sides. And since I'm not dealing with any fractions or anything like this, when I go to set up my table, like I like to do, start at zero, leaving yourself a space above and below. And when I plug in zero to this equation, I do get negative one because anything times zero goes away, and there's minus one. And you could use the original equation. Three times zero goes away, which means that y would just be negative one. I wouldn't jump around like that, but I'm just showing you that you uh, can always test these to make sure it's accurate. Um, let's see. I'll go back, just negative one, and I'll go forward, just positive one. 
So negative 3 times negative 1 becomes a positive 3. Minus 1 becomes 2. Plugging in a 1, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Minus 1, negative 4. I'm checking my table now. To get from 2 to negative 1, I'd have to subtract 3. And negative 1 to negative 4, I'd also have to subtract 3. So it looks like my table is accurate. Going to graph this. I'm going to set myself up from negative 5 to positive 5. I'm making those equidistant. 1, 2, 3, 4 tally marks. 1, 2, 3, 4 tally marks. Positive 5 up here. Similarly, equidistant down there. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then when I go to plug this stuff in, I got negative 1, 2. 0, negative 1. And then 1, negative 4. And there's my graph going through those points, which I can then label as the original form it was given in, 3x plus y equals negative 1. And then 4 is going to be, oh, no, it's not going to be anything. 4 is the same as number 2, so uh, go ahead and just cross it out. Alright, that's it for this video.